complexity or order of importance. It really, again, depends on your topic. So that's just something that's going to make sense based on what you're doing, right? The next section is revising, editing. Uh, and those are just standard, you know, revising, go back and look and make sure that everything is unified around your thesis, that you have answered all of the questions that the assignment is called for, right? That you have provided plenty of examples that are clear, that you've given enough examples. So again, you've got breadth and depth, right? So your examples have breadth, they cover everything that your point has said it's gonna cover. That's breadth, right? Full coverage and depth, right? They, they do everything they, they need to do, right? Um, are they persuasive? Do they add interest? Have you got transitional words and phrases? Um, do you need to document a support? Remember, you're not supposed to do anything that needs documentation. Uh, so again, you shouldn't have any research here. So that should be something that should be easy to check off because no, you're not doing any research using common knowledge and your own personal experience. So editing, again, just make sure this one has a focus on grammar and context using commas in a series, right? So again, I believe in the Oxford comma, which basically means that if you have three or more things in a series joined by an and or an or or something like that, you use a comma after the first two. So comma, comma, and, and then the third item, right? Um, so again, uh, but it's not incorrect to not use that second comma right there. I'm not going to count it off, even though I prefer to use the ox for comma. <laughs> uh, so again, right here, um, it says, although newspaper and magazine writers routinely leave out the comma before the last item of a series of college of uh, three or more items, you should always include the comma in your college writing. Uh, I would say that's probably a good thing, but I would say that Again, it just depends on the teacher. Some teachers don't mind, some teachers do. So technically it is correct, but there is a lot of controversy about that. Uh, again, I guess you could just say, make sure that your you know, know what your teacher prefers. Um, but again, this is just a review. Right? And then you got your editing checklist right there. Um, and then the two essays that you're supposed to read, one was by Brent Staples. This is a very, very famous essay. Brent Staples is a very interesting person. He got out of the, uh, the inner, the, you know, the kind of the ghetto, um, came back. His, his younger brother was killed in a gang shooting. Um, and uh, Just Walk On By is about his own experiences being racially profiled, not only by police, but just by other people as he is walking, he likes to walk at night and uh, just about the other way, other people, you know, respond to him as a black man just walking and he's not doing anything. He's just walking and how they react, just assuming that he is up to no good. Um, and then uh, 10 Ways We Get the Odds Wrong by Zvalovitz is a really interesting essay about risk and, you know, how we choose to do or not do things based uh you know on what we assume is the risk um and so again look at how they use examples right so here you can see his first victim so this is the idea right and he says was a woman right and then he gives us here in green we can see details so he just doesn't say she was a woman he gives us these examples of, well what kind of woman she was well dressed she was white probably in her early 20s. So here it was a deserted street in Hyde Park. But look at the green, a relatively affluent neighborhood in an otherwise mean and impoverished section of Chicago. So look at those details that add interest. He says to her, the youngest black man, that's him that he gives us those details, the broad six foot two inches, right? Um, and notice that these are important details. They're not just irrelevant details to add space. These are important because who she was, where they were, who he was, these are important details for the, the purpose of this essay. She's white, well-dressed, early 20s. They are in Hyde Park, um, an, an affluent ne uh, neighborhood, but it's in an impoverished area in Chicago. So it wouldn't be unusual for a well-dressed, well-to-do white woman to maybe come across someone who was not well-to-do, right? 
So then here he is, and he's telling us what he looked like, so how she would see him. So these are important details. They're not just details to take up space. They're painting the picture, right? Here, I soon gather that being perceived as a dangerous as dangerous is a hazard in itself. And then he tells us something about that. I only needed to turn a corner into a dicey situation or crowd some frightened armed person in a foyer somewhere or make an errant move after being pulled over by a policeman. So he gives us three different examples briefly. They're not huge, but they're enough to give us some examples of these dangerous situations where he might be perceived as a threat, right? And then I was to become thoroughly familiar with the language of fear. And then look, here is all of these examples, right? So this is his topic sentence, right? And now the paragraph is going to give us all of these examples of where he was thoroughly becoming familiar with the language of fear, right? So you're just going to see throughout where he sets up a situation and then he provides us with these wonderful descriptions that provides this example of what he's talking about so that we see it coming alive, right? That's what that example, exemplification essay does. Now, this is kind of a narrative essay as well that functions with a lots of examples. So again, it's a professional essay, which oftentimes that we call this a creative nonfiction piece because this is his life. Uh, so your essays are going to be a little bit more in more stricter kind of college essay format, but really look at the way he gives us those details, those necessary details to let us really understand what's going on. And that's what you want to do here to really make your essay pop, to make it inspiring, to make it persuasive, to make it uh, interesting to the reader. Okay. All right, well, that's it for today. I hope that helps you get started on your essay. I hope you enjoy doing this one. I think some of the topics uh, that you have to choose from are really interesting, uh, but still challenging. Uh, there's so much that you could choose from uh, that I hope that it inspires you to uh, have some fun. Bye-bye.